Hey y'all, um, hope everyone's doing well. This is going to be another hack sesh. Um, we're going to talk about Kate's at Home um, and the community there and how they're using Talos and how they're using Sidero. And we'll walk through kind of a full end-to-end -end demo of, um, of doing all that stuff and kind of setting it up in the home lab and, and seeing what that looks like. So... Um, <clears throat> Kate's at Home is a, a group that you can find in the GitHub repo. There's a Discord channel or Discord server. Um, seems like a pretty cool group of folks, and they've found, seems like a lot of them now are using Talos Linux and Sidero, uh to, to manage um, their home lab, their home Kubernetes deployments, um, deploying things like home automation stuff, uh, PyHole, um, what else? Home media stuff. There's a bunch of, there's a ton of Helm charts they maintain, which is great. Um, you should totally check them out. And if you're interested in that kind of, that kind of thing. So, um, <clears throat> one of the things they've been doing, a lot of the folks seem to be doing, um, is doing Sidero metal and actually pixie booting their servers and turning them into Kubernetes clusters to, to use, to host all these, all these Helm charts and things. Um, I wanted to roll through kind of a full from zero end to end uh, d deployment of all that stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna walk through all that. This is gonna be a, probably a pretty long form video, um, and we'll I'll kind of try to break it up in chapters in in YouTube. Um, I need to get better at using YouTube, I guess, but um, I'll try to break it up a little better uh, than I usually do because it will be long. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, we'll start from there. But I do want to preface a little bit in saying like what we're going to do is a deployment I see a lot of folks out there doing, which is kind of a Raspberry Pi um, as the management plane, the Sidero Metal management plane, and then Proxmox VMs kind of hanging off, pixie booting off of it. Um, and that's a, that's a totally reasonable use of Sidero Metal. I mean... Uh, that's what it's there for. Um, I will say though, I think in a home lab environment, unless, you know, home lab is different, right? The, some people may be doing this totally just to get the experience with cluster API and Sidero metal and learn about pixie booting and all that stuff. And that's awesome. Um, if you're just doing a handful of nodes and you know, you don't really need or want the pixie booting part and don't really care to learn about that part, you can totally just boot our ISO and bootstrap Talos that way and just create a little cluster um, kind of on the fly that way. Um, the process for doing that is pretty well documented in the Talos docs. Um, it's also pretty similar to what we'll do as far as creating the Raspberry Pi. Like you just boot the ISO, it'll drop into maintenance mode and you'll do an apply config. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if you've only got a handful of nodes and you don't mind doing like a Talos CTL upgrade uh, going forward for that, it may be a little less headache to deal with. Um, you know, Sidera Metal is definitely there for the folks that are wanting to do lots of Kubernetes clusters and manage them kind of, you know, at some scale. Um, so yeah, I just, just a little preface there, something that's been on my mind about it. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, I'll share my screen and we'll go ahead and we'll get us a Raspberry Pi deployed. So, um, the first thing you're going to do is head out to the Talos releases and you'll go to the metal, metal dash section. Um, and there's an RPI image. So we'll go ahead and download that. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll move it from my downloads directory. Um, I've got this little case at home, uh, directory here just to kind of keep all this stuff, um, in one spot. Um, and I'm going to move that into here. Um, and then I will grab, let me set up my SD card, put it in my little SD card reader, and I'll connect it in. Hang on just a second. Okay, so now if I do an F disk, I should see. Yeah, so I've got dev SDC here. Um, 
this is my SD card. This is already I got Talos on it, but I'll wipe it and go through that process too because it might be useful for someone. Um, you would do a sudo um, umount dev SDC um, just to make sure it's not mounted anywhere. It looks like some a couple of those partitions were. Um, and then you'll do sudo wipe fs dash a dev SDC. Um, and be careful with this one. Just double check you're talking to the right device um, because otherwise it's pretty catastrophic. So um, that totally wipes out that file system. <clears throat> and then now we can uh, extract our image. So the metal image is an XZ image, so it's compressed. Um, we'll need to decompress that with XZ-D and then metal RPI, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And that'll drop it right. That'll get rid of that XZ file, and it'll drop it, drop that image directly into this uh, this directory. So, um, if I do an ls, it's now just a dash image or dot image, and it's like 1.3 gig. So there's a little, it's a little big, um, but we'll dd that over. So we'll do that with sudo dd input file is metal rpi output file is dev sdc. And then I think it's status equals progress. Actually get some insight into what's going on. Um, and that's gonna copy over. Um, that'll take probably two and a half, three minutes. And I'll probably pause in just a second and kind of come back when it's done. Um, but you don't have to use DD for this. Like if you're more comfortable using some of the other tools out there, like Bellina Etcher, I think is one. Um, I think the Raspberry Pi folks have their own SD card imager. Um, and I, I haven't tried them in a, in a while. Um, I know Bellina Etcher used to work. I, I just haven't used it cause DD is just easier. Um, but if it takes an image and pops it onto an SD card, it should probably work. So, uh, feel free to give those a try. And if they don't work, you know, there's always DD that does. So, um, I'm going to pause here probably and just come back in a second, uh, when this is done. So I don't waste waste your time so i'll be right back all right we're back um that took you know a minute uh, two and a half minutes or so um got that dd over i'm now going to plug it into the raspberry pi and power it on uh let's see I lost, might have lost some audio here. Let's see. Fun times. Hang on. Okay. That seems to be back. Um, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um, okay. So I got my SD card here. I'm going to plug this into this Raspberry Pi and we'll go from there. Power that on, and I've got got a little capture card connected to that, and hopefully we'll get some output here. Um, NVLC on this dev video zero, um, maybe. That should be it. So, Try to just move around a little bit and look it back up and see. Okay, there we go. So I'm not sure why it's like ghosty looking like that, but we're booting Talos now. Um, and we will um, wait on that and it'll boot into maintenance mode like I said earlier. I think I've got audio back set up now. Um, <clears throat> my Bluetooth uh, adapter is a little wonky. Um, anyways, okay, so this is booted into maintenance mode, and you can tell that by um, it telling you something about uh, Telos CTL apply config, 
um, you know, this is how you should bootstrap this node. It's not been bootstrapped. Um, and so what we'll do, what I'll probably do here is I'll probably use this interactive mode that we have. Um, show you guys that. <clears throat> Installing Talos that way. It just makes it a little easier, a little cleaner. Um, what you can do as well is um, you can do something like a Talos CTL gin config. And that will give you, you do a Talos CTL, like for example, if I wanted to generate one for this Raspberry Pi, I would do um, Talos CTL gin config. Uh, the cluster name is gonna be Sidero Management Plane. And then the cluster endpoint is the actual IP um, of this node. Um, and just, this is only a single node, so I can just use this IP directly. If it's multiple nodes, things get a little different. Um, we start talking about load balancers or using our VIT feature, which is in the Telus docs, um, and a few other things that you can do. But um, in this case, I would just do HTTPS 192.168.1.100 uh, port 6443. So it's the cluster endpoint is actually the Kubernetes endpoint that will be that will live on this node. Um, so it's just the IP with the port 6443 and you know. SS, uh, HTTPS. So if I did want to gin config, that's how I would do it. Um, but I think I'm actually just going to use, so hitting that would drop out a control plane.yaml, a worker.yaml and a talus config to use. And then you would call apply config using the dash F flag and apply that control plane.yaml file. Um, and that would bootstrap this node, but <clears throat> I instead want to use the interactive installer. Um, so that's Talos ETL apply dash config, um, dash dash insecure, dash dash interactive, dash n one nine two one six eight one dot one hundred, um, and that will give me I can connect to this node in maintenance mode, um, and that will give me some the ability to install using our our TUI installer, um, and the reason I did that versus using um, gen config and some some config patches is just because like the installation disk here is different because it's an SD card um, and there's just a, a few things that are a little more confusing to deal with in config patches versus just stepping through this since it's just a quick install anyway um yeah so this is my installer image that's the latest that's great disk is fine uh, machine config, I want it to be a control plane. I'm also going to give the cluster name uh, Sidero Management Plane. Um, I'm going to say allow scheduling. Networking config, again, I'll give it a host name um, of the same name. And then I'm just going to let that use flannel. I don't really care too much right now, so that's fine. Um, and that will generate all those configs and apply them locally, so it'll merge it into your Talos config. Um, and then it's kind of ready for use. And so I can see in the background a bunch of stuff happening and it's installing Kubernetes and getting everything up and running. Um, it usually takes a second on the Raspberry Pi because extracting extracting the images and stuff is a little slow. Um, but it does, it, it should be fairly quick. Um, and then, yeah, let's see. What else do we want to do while we're here? We applied the config. Yeah, I guess we can connect, go ahead and connect to it and I'll show that off. So, um, tell us ETL config, get contexts. Um, I'm going to have a ton of them just heads up because I develop on Talos all the time. Um, but I do have a Sidero management plane here, uh, management plane dash one, because this is not my first rodeo doing this, trying to cut this video. Um, but, uh, there's management plane one. That's the one we're using. That's the one that's selected. Um, and so that lets me do Talos CTL uh, D message, and then I can target that node 192.168.1.100. And I can get that same output that you're seeing in the console. I can see it here um, in my terminal over the Talos API. So this is what's really cool about API driven OSs is that I can do a lot of the same stuff. Um, and I can control it with Talos CTL. <laughs> so we're still waiting on Kubernetes to come up. Um, in the meantime, again, what I can do is go ahead and pull the kube config. So talus ctl kube config. 
And again, targeting that 1.100 node. Um, I can see again that I already have this it exists. So I'm going to overwrite it because I know it doesn't. Um, while the cube config exists, I know that the cluster itself does not. So I'm going to overwrite it. <laughs> and that's going to go ahead and reset my cube config for that context as well. You can see my terminal here. Um, then I should be able to do a kubectl get nodes. Uh, once that's up and running, it's probably still. Um, yeah, so the API server is up. The kubelet hasn't registered yet, so we're still coming up, but we're pretty close. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that 1.100 um, IP. So I want to make sure that stays true for, for my environment. So if I'm here in my router, um, I may have to log in again. Eh, okay, nope. Um, this is an edge router. This probably depends on, you know, everybody runs different stuff, but, um, in the leases, I went ahead already. Um, and I have the ability to say like, here's an IP, I can map it and I give it a little name and just make sure that DHCP always hands out that IP address for that Mac address. Um, and so you can see that I've already done that actually here for the 1.100. Uh, just to make sure that Sidera management plane always gets that 100 address and it can't be given out to anyone else. Um, you know, just making sure that my Sidera management plane endpoint is not going to change on me uh, once things are set up. So, <laughs> perfect. Um, we've now got Kubernetes up and running. Um, the next thing I'm probably going to need to do is make sure that um, since this is just a single node, um, a single node Kubernetes cluster with the control plane as well, um, I'm probably going to, I had to make sure this is schedulable. So, um, so that any container that gets scheduled can actually run on this control plane. So you do that by doing, um, you're going to remove the scheduling, taint, the no schedule taint. Um, and I just know I have this in my history, but it looks like this, um, QCTL taint node, the name of the node, and then you're basically removing the little minus here is a remove, but you're removing this no schedule taint that's on this node. So we're going to do that and make sure that we can throw containers on here. Um, and everything's up and running now, which is great. This is as much as we're going to get from this step. Um, the next thing we need to do is install Sidero and all the other cluster API components. So um, we've now got a working Raspberry Pi. Awesome. Um, let's install. OK, so cluster CTL version. So you'll need cluster CTL installed for this step. I've got the latest, I think, as of yesterday. So we're going to hope that's good enough. Um, it sh certainly should be. I doubt there's been a release since then. Um, and we'll go ahead and get that installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you that I know that there is a little bit of buggy behavior in Cluster API or in Cluster CTL right now with Talos and our providers. Um, and the reasoning for that is basically we went through an org rename in GitHub um, a couple weeks back and things that are supposed to redirect according to GitHub do not redirect. <laughs> um, so uh, that turned out to be a little problematic in terms of like when you go look for an asset, like if I'm in GitHub, for example, and I go to, you know, if I were to go to github.com, Talos Systems Talos, that would work. Like it would redirect me to Sidero Labs, which is the new org name. Um, but if I try to download an asset based on that's, you know, github.com, Talos Systems, blah, 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 you know, give me the ISO, for example, it does not redirect properly. So um, that caused us a little bit of heartburn. Um, and we're going to fix that. We're going to work around that for now. The next version of Cluster API will actually have it fixed, um, but it hasn't been released yet. So what we're going to do to work around that is edit a file called, um, in the home directory, there's a dot, if you've, well, 
you want to create a directory if it doesn't exist, but there should be a .cluster API. And in that, a file called clusterctl.yaml. And we're going to edit that file. And I've already edited it here, but I'll walk you through it. So <clears throat> this is just kind of a manual override to say, for the provider of Talos, the bootstrap provider of Talos, here's the URL I want you to use. Here's the control plan provider. You know, here's the URL I want you to use. Same goes for Stero and the infrastructure provider. Um, and that's just changing. All it does really is change that org name. Um, and if you want a quick way to copy and paste this, um, if you look at our control plane provider readme, I know I stuck it in there. Um, I'm going to work that into the Sidero docs too. I thought I, I may just have a PR hanging out there. It needs to be merged. thought I'd done it already, but I didn't see it this morning. Um, anyway, cluster API control plane provider Talos, go scoop this up and throw it in your cluster ctl.yaml. And that should fix this whole problem. So once we have that in place, we're ready to ride. Um, and then what I can do is if I'm looking at the Sidero docs, do I have Sidero docs open? Um, I'll do getting started, um, install Sidero. Um, okay, so we wanna export, grab all these exports and we want to grab this cluster CTL init command. Um, grab a VS code window for us to scratch pad. And I will blow it up some as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to edit this slightly just to change that IP mainly. Um, we're going to use host networking. We're going to do the recreate deployment strategy. That's fine. Um, and we're going to change this to 100 because that's our Sidero management plane IP. Um, and then we're gonna grab all this stuff and we're gonna pop it into the uh, terminal. And so that should get us off to the races, cluster cluster API or cluster CTL should go grab all the cluster API components and deploy them to the um, to the management plane. And if you wanna check on that, you can do a git po, git po while I'm here. Um, and I can see cert managers getting installed. Um, and we can actually just watch that while this happens. It shouldn't take too long. It's only a minute or so really to get everything kind of at least dropped in there. <clears throat> nice cluster API. Bootstrap provider should be coming up too. Um, and if you're not super familiar with cluster API, we're, we're going to walk through some of it for sure as we create a workload cluster, but, um, just know that it kind of introduces a bunch of custom resources into your kind of management plane Kubernetes cluster, um, that allow you to control other Kubernetes clusters. So you have the idea of a cluster as a custom resource in this Kubernetes cluster now. So I can say like kubectl get clusters, right? And I don't have, I won't have any, but I do have the idea of a cluster, the, the custom resource there. Um, and so, you know, same goes for like machines, right? So these are the actual um, machines that make up a cluster. So it, it introduces that stuff and allows you to use the Kubernetes ideas of like replica sets essentially, and being able to set a number of replicas and being able to do rolling upgrades and, and things like that. So uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, it can get a little complex, but um, but yeah, it's uh, should be off. We should be in business here, I think. Um, looks like something a little wonky happened there, but I think we finally settled. Um, okay. Yeah. So it looks like we're up and running. So cool. Um. We're ready now, I think. So let's see. Um, now that we've got that, we should be all up and running and we should be serving all of our like pixie stuff. So um, in this section on exposing the Sidero services, we already kind of did that by using host networking. Like we just, if you're doing this in like a, you know, a multi-node, 
um, management plane, you know, HA, which is probably the recommended way to do it. Um, you would probably do like metal LB, deploy that onto that management plane as well and expose all these things as a service. Um, but since we're doing like a single node, um, we just used host networking and it's just serving directly off of the host network. Um, but we don't have to worry about that right now, which is nice. And so we can verify that things are up and running by grabbing this little guy here. So this is just, um, 8081 is the port that we serve all of the, um, TFTP and IP or well, the iPixie stuff off of, um, and so you can just curl that. So let's try that out editing to make sure we have the right IP. Um, yeah, so we can see that that actually did give me a 200. So, um, should be okay. It's binary output. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so it is actually up and serving and that's great. So now what we need to do is make sure that we can actually pixie boot off of it. So it's serving all the proper stuff. We need to make sure that VMs that come up in Proxmox are going to actually use it. So we do that with DHCP settings. Um, in this like prereq for DHCP service, there's a bunch of, um, there's kind of a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, I wrote some of the stock. I think Sean wrote some of the stock. Um, but we're going to go into the edge router and see if we can't um, configure this thing. So I know that I can do this through the CLI on the router. I'm less confident I can do it uh, in the GUI of the router, but we'll use the GUI to make sure that it's there, I guess. Um, in the in the Edge Router GUI, you can look at the config tree and you can do like service. You can drill into the same path, right? So service, um, DHCP server, shared network name. Mine is just called LAN. Um, and then the subnet of 192.168, blah, blah, blah. Um, I can see that there's subnet parameters, which is really what I'm looking for. Um, but I'm going to add that through the CLI. So I can do that by um, SSHing into my router. <clears throat> and what I'll do is, I'll, this is going to be very edge router specific. I've, I haven't done it um, on a different router in a while. Um, but yeah, it's th the same general idea. You want to be able to either include a, a config file, which is what we're going to do here, or you want to be able to, um, I think in the case of like, you know, ISC DHCP server, you can just do the options directly in there. Um, but we're going to try to grab, we're going to try to inject this whole file essentially to handle all of the different ways that you could fix your boot, whether it's UEFI or BIOS and, and things like that. So. Um, if I'm logged into the edge router on the right here, um, I can type configure and then I can say show, um, and that gives me everything, but I'm going to say show services, I think service. Yeah. Um, and that's that DHC that gets me into, I'm basically drilling down that same config tree. So show service, here's the DHCP server. Um, and I can say like show service, um, shared. Network name. See if I remember how to do this. Is it dot? Not quite. All right. Um, I'm gonna just leave it there then. But you can. Um, oh, it's service DHCP server. That's what I missed. Um. So yeah. So I can see as I can drill down that config tree. Um, you can go further and further. Um, what I'm going to do is set you, I'm going to, I'm going to copy and paste this essentially. Um, but I'm going to set the subnet parameter to include a, a comp file. So, um, I'm going to open up my scratch pad again so we can edit, but, um, for the subnet, my subnet is a cider. My subnet name is a cider. I'm not sure why that one wasn't, but, um, 192, slash 24. Um, and my shared network name is just LAN. So this is just my home network. Um, 
and I'm going to inject this to say include uh, this config file. And um, the, the quoting, the HTML encoding of the quotes is pretty important. So make sure, at least on an edge router, um, you've got that in there. <clears throat> and I'm going to set this. Um, and then I'm going to commit and save. So the commit should like verify it, I think, that it's valid. And then I'll save it. And that will apply it. <clears throat> and then if I go back into the edge... Routers UI, yeah, yeah, let's go. Um, again, drilling into the config tree, share network name, LAN, subnet, um, 192. So I can see now that my subnet parameters are in there. Um, and you may just be able to honestly just add here and just drop that right in. Um, that might have been easier. Um, but yeah, so that creates the include for this path. So Etsy DHCP. So if I exit now and go back to kind of the main um, login of the edge router on the right, um, I'm going to become su super user or root, and then I'll go to Etsy DHCP and um, I'm going to remove this old one and we'll create a new one. But what I want to do is create this ipixymetal.conf file that I specified over here on the left, right? I said, I want to include this file. So now it needs to exist. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually just copy and paste this entire blob right here um, after doing some editing. So I'm going to grab that again out in the um, scratch pad and we'll edit these 168.1.100 with the IP of my Pixie server, which is my said my Sidera server. Um, and one important other important bit is <clears throat> anywhere it's actually using HTTP for this, I need to include the port. So 8081 is the port for that by default. Um, and again, that's just because like I'm using host networking and just exposing it directly. So I know it's port 8081. Um, if you're doing it over metal LB, it may be different. You know, you may just be able to, uh, you may be able to select the port or things like that, but this is what's going to work for me. So I'm going to grab this and copy it. And then I'm going to insert that on the right and save it off. Um, and so now that I've got that file created, it's ready to inject. Um, I now need to restart, um, DHCP service on edge router. So system CTL restart Viata DHCP, I think. Um, and then I'll check the status of that to make sure I didn't mess something up. Um, yeah, so it's, it's running. So should be doing what we want it to do. Um, and that should get us to the point of being able to pixie boot. <clears throat> so configured our router. Um, we've installed Sidero, gotten a management plane up and running. And now we're ready to join some servers, I think. So let's go to Proxmox. Um, this is my Proxmox environment, which is very bare bones because I don't use it very often. Um, and I'm certainly not a pro level Proxmox user. So you guys will probably see some things I'm doing wrong. But what I am going to do is go and create some VMs. So let's try a test one first. Um, I'm going to call this Sidero Managed 1. Um, and I'm going to say no media because I want it to pixie boot. Um, and I ran into this yesterday. This seems important. On using the default of CBIOS, I had a problem with it doing the chain loading. So it fired up CBIOS as iPixie, I guess. And that didn't seem to jive with Sidero Metal for some reason that I'm not quite sure of yet. Um, we'll have to drill into that a little further. But switching this to U UEFI, um, you have to give it a storage volume. Um, it does seem to work um, if you disable this pre-enroll keys. So there's something about that pre-enroll keys that breaks. It, it causes an access denied error, I guess, or something when it's trying to um, pixie boot. And again, that's something I'll have to wind up troubleshooting as part of as part of this. But um, if you do set it to UEFI and 
you, sorry, I'm trying to get some windows moved around here. Um, yeah, and if you disable that pre-enroll keys, it will work fine. So just keep that in mind. Um, disks, I'm gonna set these to like 10 gig disks. I don't really need a whole lot. This is just for playing around. Um, two cores and I'll do three gigs of RAM. And then, yeah, I'll keep the networking the same. That should be fine. Um, and so, uh, with that, we'll start this up and see if it pixie boots like we want it to. So, um, it should be fairly fast to get up and running. So starting pixie, I'm connected to server downloading the file um yeah so that's good stuff it looks like it's on its way so um what this will do is it'll pixie boot into our agent and our agent um, has some tools built in to do some SMBIOS kind of information scraping and it will then talk back to the sidera metal endpoint so you can kind of see it's very gonna be very quick but um it'll read SMBIOS and then register so it'll say, Hey, I'm, I'm this, you know, here's my info. Do you know about me? And Sidero will basically say no to start. Um, <clears throat> and what's going to happen in this case with, um, with these Proxmox VMs is essentially like, it's just going to boot loop over and over until something, ha something different happens. So it's going to keep talking to Sidero as it boots. Um, and we will make use of it in a second. So, on the right here at the top, if I do a kubectl get servers, um, I can see that my server joined. So um, that's cool. It's got some very basic, um, again, this is all kind of KVM under the hood. So uh, some very basic hardware info um, filled out. But the, the one thing that's kind of interesting about Sidero is we try not to we're not going to break things unless we're told we can, well, we're not going to break things, right? So we want to be told that we can operate on these servers before we actually do so. So nothing happens unless you accept a server, right? So um, if you change this field to accepted, and I'll show you a couple ways to do that in a minute, um, we will then say, okay, this is now, it's expected that we're able to use this. We're able to own the server for the purposes of creating workload clusters. Um, and that means that we'll do things like totally wipe all the disks um, and, and totally keep it clean and allocate it as necessary for workload cluster. And then when it's deallocated, um, it'll get cleaned back up again and, and refreshed and returned to the pool of available servers. So um you have to accept before any of that happens and there's a couple ways to do it so if i do a kubectl edit server i can change it right in kubernetes um and just change the spec accepted to true um but if you're doing a bunch of them um it may be easier to use thela so um let me find the thela repo um we have a project called Thela that is our kind of UI um, that we're building out to manage a lot of this stuff, this complexity. So, um, Sidero Labs slash Thela, um, you can go download the binary there. It's a new release as of a couple of days ago. Um, and I'm gonna, on the bottom of my, bottom right of my screen, I'm gonna fire up Thela. It's just a one, it's just a binary that opens um, a local server. So if I go connect to localhost 8080, I can now see Thela and I can see my single node uh, management plane because it uses my active context in um, Talos or my Talos config to see you know what this is. Um, I've got some weird stuff going on with mine. But anyway, um, if I look, if I'm connected to my management plane and I go to servers, I can see the servers that are registered in the same way that I saw them on the right. Um, and the status will, it will say failed, but what that means is it's not accepted. So there's some, some condition that's keeping us from owning it. Um, and then I can quickly say accept server. So 
Um, once I do that, that will go into accepted state. And on the right, if I get the servers again, I can see that accepted has been changed to true. Um, and then in Proxmox, what will happen is the next time this Pixie boots and runs the agent, um, when it checks into Sidero, Sidero will say, yes, I already know about you. And I'm allowed to do something with you. Um, so you should go wipe your disks, basically, is what will happen. Um, and we can actually watch that. We're kind of caught at the right moment, I think, hopefully. Um, and we'll see that happen. So yeah, you can see it fast wipe, reset and fast wiped super quick. Um, and it'll have a little error here about um, the BMC IP and IP my tool and some stuff like that. Um, that's to be totally expected for doing this on a VM. Um, in a real kind of data center type environment, um, when you pixie boot against Sidero and you accept the server, we try to um, create an account on the BMC so that we can do IPMI stuff so we can power up and power down the machines. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Um, so that we can power down the machines when they're not in use and power them on as they get allocated and things like that. So um, it's it's going to be normal to, to kind of see an error for that if we can't do it. Um, it's not really an error. It's an ignorable thing. So um, anyway, we've got a server. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'll, I'll pause the video for a minute and go create uh, probably four more. So we'll have kind of a HA control plan and two workers as part of this. And we'll get all these added to, I'll, I'll get all these added um, registered into Sidero and then we'll go carve up a cluster. So give me a second, I'm gonna fire up a few more VMs and I'll be back. All right, folks, um, I'm back. We're now, I've, I've spun up, if you look on the left, I've got five VMs running now total. Um, they're all checked in, which is great. I need to go accept them real fast. Um, again, we'll just do that through Thela because it's faster. Um, and those will kind of get accepted. Well, they'll change to accepted immediately and then they'll get cleaned on their next reboot. So um, pretty quick stuff, which is nice. And we're ready to create a cluster. Um, so we're kind of, if you're going through our docs, we're after import workload machines, which is where you do the server registration process. Um, it is worth mentioning server classes as part of this. So um, we offer you the ability to create what's called a server class, and that's a group of one or more servers. Um, and that really just allows you, especially at scale, to carve your hardware up in a bunch of different ways, right? So you can do AWS style naming of, you know, in, in three large, C2 small, like you see in the docs, you can do, these are storage nodes, these are compute nodes. You can do things like that. Um, yeah, so you can carve these up any way you want. The default, we have a default one that catches all. So it's just called any, um, which is what we're gonna use here because they're all the same anyways and we don't care, but, um, yeah, so um, let's create a cluster manifest. Um, I'm going to stop Thela so I can get this kind of out of here. Um, and then we'll go to this kind of create a workload cluster section of the docs. So um, what we want to do is generate a cluster manifest. And again, we're going to copy this um, <clears throat> and edit it for our uses. So, sorry, just a second. Okay. Um, so again, we're gonna say we wanna use the server class any for both the control plane and the worker. Um, in the Telos version, we're gonna do 101. Um, Kubernetes version, we're gonna do, see what's on the management plane. Um, 1.23.5. Uh, control plane port's fine. The control plane endpoint is going to be um, an IP or DNS name of that targets all of my control plane nodes. So I'm going to have three of them. So we're going to use the VIP feature for Talos, right? So what I'm going to do is pick 
uh, an IP in my block and kind of we're going to specify that as a VIP. So the way that works is a couple of different things. So <clears throat> I'm going to go out of my DHCP server again. And if I'm looking at the services and the details, I can see that I have a range start and end here of 38 and 243, right? So um, I can pick something after 243 and we can use that as our VIP. So, it's, so the DHCP won't hand it out, which is great. And then I can use that as the VIP and it'll float between my cluster or my control points. Uh, and that's built into Talus, which is nice. So um, I'm going to pick like 248. I'm going to pick a random one because I... I usually pick nice round numbers or, you know, multiple to five, but um, I'm thinking maybe it's in use. So, um, 192.168.1.248. Um, and we're going to use that info to generate a cluster. So, I'm going to give this a name of uh, Sidero Workload. And then we'll save it off as Sidero Workload.yaml. Um, and we'll go through it. Uh, I can't type today. Still a little early. Um, okay. So let's pop this into here. And that's going to create a CML file. So now let's open this in VS Code. Go what it looks like. Um, so <clears throat> there's a lot of YAML to this, right? I mean, this is just normal cluster API stuff, but it's just, it's several different um, Kubernetes resource manifest essentially so um bear with me but there's a few different things that are important here um again this is kind of the metal machine template we're using that any server class um the talus control plane is something we're going to come back to in just a second around we want to inject a config patch for our install disk and for our VIP here so um we'll do that we'll walk through patching too um, but you'll notice like it went ahead and specified the Kubernetes version, uh, the Talos versions as well, and the Talos config template. Um, one thing I didn't do that I probably should have is in this um, cluster CTL, see what options are there. I think you can, there's a ton of options, good grief. Um, I'm pretty sure though, oh yeah, here we go. So like, this is what I should have done. The control plane machine count, it defaults to one. Um, I think the worker machine count is basically zero for, for our templates. So I'm gonna update these in place in here just, just to show that you can do that. So I've got five total nodes. I want three for an HA control plane and I want two workers. So this is my worker machine deployment. So I'm gonna set the replicas to two. Um, you can think of this just like a deployment, a, re a regular Kubernetes deployment, and that like this is a number of pod replicas, right? So this is a number of machine replicas. Um, and then in the <clears throat> control plane, um, I've got a replica, replica count of one, and I'm going to change that to three. So um, that'll make sure that all five of those get allocated and that we um, have an HA control plane in our workload cluster. So... That's super nice. Um, I now want to do some config patching. So if I look in the Talos docs, I can see um, what it looks like. I need So I need the, the VIP uh, override, right? So I want to inject a config patch like this. Um, and I need to figure out where that is. Um, uh, so it's under machine network interfaces. So I should be able to do something like this. Let's go. Um, this is workers. I want to do this in my control plane section. So under Talos control plane, um, in the spec, there's a control plane config. And then there's a control plane key. So we used to support a net nodes too. We don't anymore, but we have, we haven't fully deprecated it. So there is like a control plane key and a net key that's not shown. Um, so under config, under control plane config and control plane, we'll do config patches. Um, and then we will try to remember how to config patch. <laughs> now that I say that, I've forgotten. So if I'm in the Sidero docs, um, I know that I have an example of this um, down. Is there one in servers? Yeah, perfect. Okay. 
this is what we want to see. So you can config patch in a bunch of different places. Um, you could do it to the server itself if it's like something very specific to that exact server and its hardware um, that keeps it from installing Talos if it's, you know, with the defaults. Um, you can do it as a server class if, again, if there's something for this type of hardware, um, you know, but it's multiple nodes, that kind of thing. Um, or you can do it even inside the, the Talos, like, control plane and the Talos config template. So uh, we support it in a bunch of different spots depending on how you want to break that out. Um, but the one we want to grab first is we'll grab the uh, install disk because we actually do need this one too. Um, so we'll grab that one, pick it right up, and just pop it in here and we'll work, worry about the this. Um, and so we need that in both places actually. So um what i'll do is i'll copy that from the control plane section and then i'll actually head down here to the talus config template the worker section um, and inject that again so that workers also know that they should install the dev sda and then <clears throat> um we'll pick up we'll do the vip so machine network interfaces is what i want to override um, but i'm going to grab this and we'll do something like this. Um, op replace a path machine network interfaces value. And then I'm going to give that a new line. And then we'll line all this back up because that didn't go as planned. Um, yeah, so we're gonna tell it ETH, ETH zero um, is the is the well it's just a list we're injecting into this machine network interfaces but we're going to specify a single element in this list to say for interface eth0 we do want you to do dhcp and we want you to use a vip ip um, so it'll have basically two ips on that eth0 uh nick and then 1248 i think i chose let me double check 192168 yeah okay um yeah, so that should be all we need. Um, and that should, when I apply this manifest, um, the Talos bootstrap provider will generate um, a Talos machine config based on all of the stuff that we've config patched in. And it will pass it to the node um, as it gets allocated in Pixie Boots and talks back to Sidero and says, hey, you know, I need my metadata. So um, we should be ready to go, I think. Uh, that should be all we need. So we will blast this out and see what fireworks are in store for us. Um, okay, so I'll do... Um, so I've got Sidero workload.yaml and then I just kubectl apply that basically. Um, and that will create a bunch of stuff. Then there's a nice watch command that I noticed yesterday for the first time um, in the Sidero docs. So in that getting started, creating a workload cluster section. Um, there's this watch, watch kubectl that gives you kind of all the bits you need to be paying attention to. And so I can see now basically that there's a couple of different things we're looking at. Here's the cluster that got provisioned um, you can see the nodes or the machines themselves provisioning, and as they're provisioning, Sidero is a sign like this is Sidero provider ID, and that corresponds to the server that's getting selected for them. So you can see they are they are are all allocated. Um, and here's where they're being used essentially. So these are coming up, um, and they're booting, which is great. Um. So let's see. Um, it's going to take a minute, obviously. We'll, we'll peek in and see what we can see here um, in Proxmox in the console. So this is installing Talos. Um, it may look a little scary, depending on what, we're, what kind of node this is. And I don't know straight off. Um, but you know if it's not a if it's not the control plane node it's going to sit there and hang and wait um but it is running etcd so it must be a control plane node of some sort i'm just not sure if it's the first one so um sidero 
or the control plane provider for Talos will select one of the nodes as the first one, quote unquote, and will actually bootstrap um, etcd against it. So um, it looks like we're kind of off to the races here. It's you know doing a bunch of manifest stuff. Um, that's cool. So we should be in business. Um, what I can do then is I can pull the cube config. So you can do that with cluster CTL, uh, cube config. Um, thought, let's see. Get cube config. Yeah, okay. Cluster CTL, get cube config, and then the name of the cluster. So Sidero workload, I think is our name. Um, and so that will actually just dump it out. Um, and I'm just gonna write that to a file. Um, then you can do something like kubectl dash dash cube config. Um, and give it that cube config file. And then I can go get notes. Um, and I can see that I have nodes joining, which is great. Um, it's going to look a little weird, actually, <laughs> now that I look at it. Um, we're getting hit by, and I'm not sure why the host name isn't getting fully kind of passed down from Proxmox into Qmu, but um, we're, we're getting hit by the default host name generation of Intalos. So what we do by default is if we can't get a host name from anywhere, um, we basically generate one, which is Talos dash and then the IP address of the first, the first IP address we come across. Um, and so basically in one of these nodes or a couple of them it looks like, but it doesn't really matter. So it's, it's, it's a moot point, but, um, some of them ha caught an IPv4 address first, just as we kind of parse through the list of, of addresses. Um, and some of them caught an IPv6 address because I do have kind of both running in my network here. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it shouldn't break anything. It's not a big deal. Um, it's just, you may want to make sure if you're doing this to, to set some static host names, um, you know, if you want to do, do it that way or, um, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Um, so we'll wait on these to become ready. Um, and then we should be done, I think. Um, Looks like everything's up pretty much. I'm just waiting on a few little things to create. Um, yeah, so we've got two of our three control plane nodes up. One should be coming up here shortly. Um, and then two workers. So um, that's, I mean, that's almost all of it. Um, that's creating a cluster with Sidero trying to think of what's valuable to mention, uh, what else is valuable to mention. Um, the Sidera workload YAML is kind of how you'll orchestrate upgrades. And so um, it's worth saving this off in a Git or, you know, private GitHub repo or something. Um, and using that as kind of your, your source of truth for it, for sure. Um, yeah, so everything's up, perfect. Um, so to do it though, what you'll do is something like this. Um, you will, so I'm trying to think of a good way we can test this out. I, we could try to drop down a Kubernetes version, I guess. Um, we'll set this to 123.4 in both places against the workers and, um, the, uh, control plane nodes and we'll reapply. Uh, the workload cluster. And then what that should do is it should start a rolling upgrade, I think. So if I do a kubectl, this is against the management plane. Get node, no, sorry, get servers. Um, machines is what I want, sorry. Um, so that will, it. I don't have an extra piece of hardware for this. So this is going to make it a little funky. Um, because I have one in provisioning state, it's trying to bring up one on, with Kubernetes 1.23.4, but it doesn't have a server to allocate. So we're going to kind of hang out there. Um, 
until it happens. So actually, let me go, I guess, add another server real quick um, to make this work. And I think I could probably make it work too by deleting a machine. Um, but I'm not certain on that, so I don't want to try that out yet. So we'll say Sidero Manage, no media. Again, same old stuff. UEFI, no keys. Um, two cores. Start it up. So again, this is, this will just pixie boot right away, um, join, and then we'll accept it. And actually, I can walk through the accepting uh, using kubectl again too. So that'll be nice. Um, let's wait on that to register. So it's super tiny on on the left and probably hard to see. Um, but yeah, it is registered now. So if we get servers, I can do a QCTL edit of that server and we'll go ahead and change that to accepted. Um, and there's a one liner for this too, somewhere in the docs. So that may be helpful for people. Um, accepted is true. That should be all I need to do. So now next time this checks in with Sidero, it'll get wiped and it'll probably get allocated right away. Um, yeah, so let's watch that. And that should get us off to the races of rolling down uh, Kubernetes. So that wiped the disk. <clears throat> and it's now allocated as well. So it'll probably take another reboot to actually pick that up. Um, just because it happened so fast, but it should actually start installing now. So, um, yeah, maybe that's a good exercise to show. Um, okay, so it's coming up again. And if I want to do on the right, um, watch my machines, should see. Um, what you should basically basically see happen is this one will go running state, so it'll install Palos. It will do once it goes into run this running state. Um, an old one will basically get deleted, so one of the old workers will get cleaned up, and a new one will again. It'll go through the process of getting wiped, and will pixie boot again, and will do its thing. So um, we will kind of see a rolling downgrade of all of the workers um it's worth pointing out i guess that the the control plane nodes don't work, quite work this way so the way you would do this for the control planes is i would actually wait until it was done for the workers and then i would start killing off the control plane nodes one by one um and letting a new one get kind of recreated um and join and then basically kill off another one so um we're actually working on that with this ne this next sprint of sidero we're working on getting the control the control plane provider um and sidero itself in better shape to actually roll those out automatically we're just not quite there yet so it is a little bit ma more manual than it should be um we're joined to kubernetes now i think so we should be hitting running state really quick um it's waiting on Kubelet to be fully up. Just trying to uncordon. Yeah, so we should be pretty close here. And so, I mean, worth mentioning too, um, you'll do the same for a Talos upgrade. So what you would do is tweak the Talos version instead of the, the Kubernetes version um, to roll forward. And that would do the same kind of rolling rolling uh, update so um, that should be the same process um, so we can now see that this has gone running um, 
And what I would expect to see now, I think, is one of the other workers to go into deletion. Let's see if that happens like we expect. There went one. Okay. It dropped right away. Um, perfect. Uh, before I could even get out there. So let me get out of here. Um, so yeah, one got deleted. And again, it's basically going to be the same. Um, as soon as that got deleted, a new machine got created. Um, and whatever VM got deleted will get wiped and reinstalled. And we will continue this working kind of working upgrade or rolling upgrade. So um, or downgrade in this case, but that's pretty much it. I mean, that's how you orchestrate upgrades this way. Um, again, for the control plane nodes, you'll wait until the workers are done um, and then you'll kill them off one by one, um, letting them come fully back up and join the cluster before killing off the next one. Um, and then after that, you're kind of set up for um, for all, all the Kates at home stuff you want to do, I guess. I mean, um, you know, it's just Kubernetes at this point, so it's time to you know, install all your day two, you know, monitoring stuff or install some of your home automation workloads, things like that. So um, I'll probably in a new video, spend a little time talking about our day two stack and kind of what we deploy for clients and how we deploy it. Um, we kind of have a new open source project for that just called day two. Um, and yeah, so we'll walk through that some other time, but I hope this is pretty helpful um, for the folks that are wanting to try this out in the home lab. And, uh, you know, as, as always, um, hop on our Slack and ping me, uh, with any questions you have or hit me up in the case at home discord. Um, I'm in there too. So, uh, thanks for your time and I hope everyone has a good day.